Hi, Catalina here. Um, today I'm coming to you with some uh, personal updates along with some student loan news. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment below if you'd like more of this type of content. Um, instead of making it only news and article based, I wanted to share a little bit about what had transpired with me recently as the founder of Loan Sense, a student loan company. Um, that really helps people figure out their next stage of wealth building, mostly um, aspiring to get a home. And for those who don't know my personal story, I was turned down for my own mortgage in 2015. And I was told by um, the third loan officer who denied me to pay down my debt and come back, right? And so... Um, I researched the problem because I was like, oh my God, how long is this going to take me? Five, 10 years? How much is this house going to cost? Will I even be able to afford it? So I looked into the rules and I realized I could get into an income driven plan and I was able to close on a house two months later. Today I own three homes and it's really rewarding because um, the rental income allows me to really, to really have the freedom to work because I want to, not because I have to pay bills, right? The rental income has just been amazing for me. But the point that I'm telling you this is recently I tried to go bid on another house. I'm in the state of Florida and there was like 20 cash offers on this house. And the real estate agent told me that in order for me to even be considered by this um, seller who was a single mom, by the way, um, who didn't really maintain the house and she just wanted to take the increase in equity in her home and go buy something smaller somewhere where it's slightly cheaper and she doesn't have to manage any of the repairs. So I thought, well, as a single mom and mostly competing with investors, like I, I might have an opportunity, but the realtor told me I'd have to offer literally like a hundred thousand dollars over ask in order to be competitive because I have a loan and it's more risky. And I just thought to myself, like, how does this make any sense that regular people can't compete against investors? And at the same time, you know, our parents' generation who who kids might have left the house, they're trying to downsize. At the same time, our generation's trying to get a starter home. It's a really, really tough market. So we don't tell people to buy just to buy. Um, of course, like... The analysis is very individual here, right? So I decided what I was going to do is um, I was just going to invest in like looking for really good tiny house builders. So <clears throat> really positive news. I put a down payment on my first tiny house. It's so beautiful. Um, I Before I promote them, I should probably get their permission, but, ba but basically... It's going to be built here in Central Florida, and I'm going to get it delivered sometime in June. If you like this content and want to see what that's like, just comment below, and I can give you a tour of my tiny house when it gets here. But I'm going to be putting it, I have a really big backyard. I'm going to be putting it back there, and I'm going to be renting it out on Airbnb. And um, I'm basically generating money off of my backyard, which isn't currently making me any money, right? We're about eight blocks from the beach in Florida, so really ideal location. And I just want to see what I can generate with the land I already own, right? And so I'm all about turning one units into two units, as well as figuring out how to generate more money with the land I currently have instead of trying to go compete with in this insane market, right? Okay, that's a little update on me personally. Um, if you want a tour of my tiny house or any more information um, on this tiny house, how I went about researching who to build it and how to find, I, I went through like five different buyers, I mean five different builders, sorry, um, to find one I really, really liked and a model I really liked um, and kind of tips and tricks on what I'm going to do to to um, increase the value of the tiny house. Like, I'll, I'll show you on the tour once it gets here, but I wanna put a claw tub bathtub, bathtub for an outdoor shower, outdoor bath experience, um, because those obviously help generate more income. So there's all kinds of little things you can do to help generate more income. So anyways, um, that is a little personal update before I talk about um, the student loan news today. 
I'm literally looking straight from the Department of Ed um, website, which announced um, that it's taking additional steps to help 3.6 million borrowers with complete loan forgiveness. 40,000 will receive immediate forgiveness. And basically they're acknowledging the fact that servicers did a really bad job of counting people's loan payments towards forgiveness. Some miscounted, others didn't count anything. And so that's why when we told bars we've been working with over the last several years to don't rely on the government to count your loans for you, right? So um, essentially that's what they're finding. I knew that from hearing people's stories well ahead of this government of this report, but basically um, they are going to go back and anybody who was put into extended forbearance instead of an income driven plan, like they're put into forbearance, it would allow them to count um, these long term forbearance terms as payments because um, a lot of borrowers who needed to go into forbearance could have just qualified for an income driven repayment plan. So they're going to put count this um, time people were in forbearance as part of um, repayment or, or payments because it's called um, forbearance steering, what they found servicers doing. And that means that um, instead of putting them into income driven repayment programs, they just told them they can go into student loan forbearance, which is an illegal practice apparently and long term forbearance is not why forbearance existed. And um, of course, they always recommended going into IDR instead of forbearance. In fact, I would say that it's not just servicers, but even like the Peace Corps recommended people put their student loan into forbearance when they went to serve, which made no sense because you could just get an, an income driven plan and pay like zero dollars because you're earning basically no money while you're serving, right? You're earning very little money, like $300 a month or something. But even the Peace Corps recommended people go into forbearance. So it's not just the servicers. But um, they're going to do a one-time account adjustment um, and count all the payments towards income-driven repayment and PSLF. So they found, real quick in this article, that more than 13% of all direct loan borrowers between July 2007 and to March 2020 used forbearance for at least 36 months cumulatively. 13%. That's a huge amount. So they're going to mitigate the harm done to these borrowers by saying, oh, all that acc interest accruing and all that. They're just basically going to say, okay, that time will count towards a one-time account adjustment to count forbearance of more than 12 months or more than 36 months towards forgiveness. So I just wanted to put that out there with some bit pretty big news. Um, they're going to put um, increased oversight onto servicers um, and their ability to use forbearance um, and they're going to track more people towards loan forgiveness by counting these payments. So what they're going to do, just to summarize, they're going to do a one-time revision of IDR payments to address past inaccuracies. If I were you, what this means personally is I would um, submit a letter to the servicer as well as call them. But additionally, I would go back and track every payment I've ever made, every month I've ever been in forbearance, and see how many months that adds up to. If you're a public servant, it adds up over to 120. You should file for public service loan forgiveness. If you're not a public servant and you didn't work for a public service organization that during that time, it needs to add up to 240 payments um, at least. And you could go ahead and count those payments and get... You could file... Um, to your loan servicer to ask for a payment count as well. So I just wanted to say that. The second thing they're going to do is they're going to fix, they're going to reform and fix the tracking system because there's clearly something wrong with it where everybody's kind of tracking their own thing and tracking their own payments and no two servicers track payments the same. So they need to fix that. Um, and then they're going to revise the regulation to produce more affordable payments. So um, what that means is the administration that, well, we know this, the administration's already taken steps to cancel 17 billion in debt for about 725,000 borrowers. Um, but they are going to, um, approve more, um, basically 6.8 billion for 113 public servants, 7.8 billion for 
400,000 plus permanently and totally disabled people, 1.2 billion for those um, of technical and, and schools who have been closed, for-profit schools, as well as 2.2 billion um, for those 105,000 bars who were defrauded by for-profit schools. So they're also taking the action to increase the maximum Pell Grant by $400. So that's the latest update. If you or anyone you know um, do not know how many payments you've made, now is an optimal time to find out because they may track, they high, highly likely and highly possible is you will be able to get more payments counted towards loan forgiveness. Um, whether it's the regular 120, 120 payment public service loan forgiveness or whether it's through 240 payments of income driven repayment forgiveness, right? And that matters. You want those payments um, to be tracked. You want them to be accurate. I would not, I've always said this, do not rely on the government to track the payments for you. You should be actively tracking, actively documenting, and you could even provide the documentation of how many payments you've made. If you've been into forbearance, count up those months, get requests from your servicer to have your payments. It's literally called a recount. Um, leave comments below if you're interested in uh, a letter. We have a template letter even at Loan Sense to request a recount of payments. Let me see if I can try to leave it in a link, but if not, leave a comment below and I will try to update the description and include the link. Um, yeah, let us know how we can help. If you're at a loss, how this impacts you, we're 100% here for you. Um, I've been recently in a Times article on how to help, how we've helped people with high student loan debt be able to close in this crazy market. So um, I'll be talking about that article at some point next here. But let me know how you like this content. If you'd like me to interweave more personal story, more personal content, happy to do that as well. Of course, I'm always going to be bringing the latest on the student loan world to you. Um, but let me know what other content you like. Um, please subscribe. Please share to those who you think it would be relevant to. And um, yeah, just comment on what you what you think is missing or what you would like to hear because I'm happy to talk about more generic wealth building topics that I've personally followed myself, as well as just my personal journey through entrepreneurship, how I've um, started building my own real estate portfolio, becoming an entrepreneur. You know, happy to share my personal journey as well, of course, bringing you news and latest upgrades, any educational information, uh, as well in the, um, really in the financial world that we help that I've navigated and help others navigate as well. So like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for your time.